I have said in times past that there's not a single verse in the Bible that says salvation is a free gift from God. Let's examine this concept together in Scripture. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Well, boom, there you have it. I guess I'm completely wrong and all of Torah observant Christianity has just been debunked. But maybe we should dig a little deeper. If we start a little bit higher, Paul says this, Are we to sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? Obedience to what, one might ask? We'll get into that later. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin have become slaves of righteousness, slaves of obedience to God's commandments. And if we scroll even higher up in this chapter, Paul says, I wouldn't know what sin was if it wasn't for the law. I wouldn't know that coveting was a sin unless the law told me. So you have received the truth of God's law, you know what sin is, and you can stop doing it, meaning you have become set free from sin because you have become a slave of God, of righteousness, of obedience. Paul continues, I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now you present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, because you were still sinning, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit that you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Then he proceeds to say, Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law. He is speaking to people that know God's laws, that were taught God's laws, and mainstream Christianity was not. But before I go too far off on that tangent, let's get back to this free gift of eternal life. In Matthew 19, 17, Jesus says, If you would enter life, keep the commandments. Then he starts listing off the commandments that God gave us in the front of the book. But people will say, it's not free if you have to do something to get it, so you're wrong. But here's the issue. No one takes the time to read the totality of scripture and find out what the qualifications are to receive that free gift. In Revelation 21, it says this, And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. Some will tell you this passage is a second witness for that free gift of eternal salvation. But let's keep reading. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God and he will be my people. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolatry, all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So it would appear that obedience is required to enter the gates and receive this free gift of eternal life. You must not be partaking in any of these things. Matthew 7, Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, believers, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does, the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. You have to enter the kingdom before you get the free gift of eternal life. And entering the kingdom has requirements. You cannot break the commandments of God. These people were doing mighty things in Jesus' name. They were casting out demons and prophesying. One thing they were not doing is being obedient to the commandments of God. Jesus says it twice. He calls them workers of lawlessness, which is only ever defined as breaking the commandments of God. 
And he says, you will not enter the kingdom because you are not doing the will of the Father, which is following his commandments. Even Paul says it, Galatians 5. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, enviness, drunkenness, orgies, and things of the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. James 2, God gives the kingdom to those who love him. But what does it mean to love God? 1 John 5, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Don't let man's unbiblical doctrine keep you out of the kingdom of God where you receive that free gift of eternal life. Ecclesiastes 12, the end of the matter has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. So with all this being said, is eternal life a free gift? Yeah, it's a free gift. It's a free gift for those who keep God's commandments out of love. It's a free gift to those who abstain from doing the things God told you not to do. It's a free gift for those who conquer. It's a free gift for those who enter the kingdom of God because they did what he asked them to do. It's a free gift by those deemed worthy enough to enter the kingdom of God. You will not take possession of this gift if you continue to live in defiance and disobedience to God. So I stand by my statement. There's not a single verse in the entire Bible that says eternal life, salvation, is a free gift that requires nothing of you. Because you cannot get that free gift unless you are deemed worthy to receive it. Paul is still correct when he says there's nothing you can do to earn eternal life. You can't purchase eternal life. There's not a checkbox that says if you do this kind act 1,000 times, you earn eternal life. But there's most certainly things you can do to keep yourself out of the kingdom of God and not be eligible to receive that free gift. I don't know about you, but I have children. And when they're disobedient, I don't go around giving them free gifts. And according to scripture, God's not that type of parent either. You must be an obedient child to remain in the kingdom of God, or else you will not be worthy to receive that free gift. John 8, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains in the house forever. And sons of God are obedient to him like Jesus was. But those who practice sin like the devil get cast out of his house and are not worthy to receive the gift of eternal life.